Hello, today we are going to talk about seatbelt safety. Today we will be interviewing Lincoln PD's Officer Will. Would you mind if we asked you some questions on seatbelt safety? Not at all. So, how often do you wear your seatbelt? Uh, our policy at the police department is that we are to have it on at all times in the cruiser. Um, for personal, I wear mine all the time. It's a habit I've been in since I was a kid. When having other passengers in the car, do you wait for all passengers to put on their seatbelts before you start car before you start driving? Most of the time, if I'm not at work, it's I'm in the car with my kids, so they have to be in a seatbelt. So most of the time, it's all um, when it's with the kids, definitely. Uh, there is a rare occasion when I have an adult in the car that doesn't usually wear their seatbelt. And because of the uh, law in New Hampshire, where if you're 18 plus, you don't have to wear a seatbelt, um, I, I don't always make sure that they do because it's their choice. Excluding those adults. Do you know anyone who doesn't wear their seatbelt? Uh, all the kids that I know do. Um, I don't, can't think of anybody off the top of my head that adamantly does not wear their seatbelt all the time. Uh, I know several adults that don't wear it when they're on short, strip, short trips to like the store or something like that. Uh, but for the most part, everybody I know wears their seatbelt. Do you know anyone who has died because of their seatbelt? I've heard of it happening on a very rare occasion, um, but I've never seen that happen. I've heard from some EMTs and firefighters that have said that uh, a seatbelt uh, could have been a cause where the person uh, was trapped inside the vehicle, but uh, those are very, very few numbers, and they're far outnumbered by the number of people saved by wearing a seatbelt. How, how often do you promote seatbelt safety? Uh, personally, I, I try to do it fairly regularly in terms of the school. When I'm here, I uh, check people coming into the school and uh, stop parents that have kids that um, don't have a seatbelt on, or at least if it's not on properly, sometimes they'll put the, the chest strap behind the kid's back, and I'll talk to them about that stuff, and uh, about proper way to wear the seatbelt, and any other safety restraint that they may be using, car seats and booster seats and such. And uh, there we have some other officers on the department that will do safety checks from time to time at different locations around town where they'll check cars as they come by, on busy weekends and such to see uh, who's wearing their seatbelt. What do you say to the parents who don't use car seats and claim they are unsafe? I've never actually had anybody tell me that, uh, but I think that I'd probably refer to the statistics uh, for the safety and what's, what's claimed for safety. I'd also talk to them about what the law is because the law requires it as well. We heard that you, Officer Will, are going to start a car seat training course of some sort. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Uh, the, the first week of November, I think it's the first week of November, I'm going to a four day long class on child safety restraint systems. And I'm not exactly sure why it's four days, but you, uh, it's a full day class for four days long and it's going over the proper way to install car seats, how to show people how to install their own car seats to make sure that they're installed properly. The statistic is that there is somewhere between 80 and 90 percent of all child restraint systems that are installed in a car are not installed properly. Uh, along with that training, in order to become a certified technician in this, you have to have a community day where you open it up to the public to come to some public location, usually say either the police department or fire department. We might do it at the school. Uh, once I complete the training, we'll have a community day there where people can come by and have their child uh, system, whatever type it happens to be, forward, rear facing, booster seat or whatnot, um, have that checked by myself and hopefully one other tech there because they can get pretty busy and uh, show parents how to install them and how to properly install them, how to check and see if they are constantly installed properly because different things can cause it to get loose. So it should be checked periodically. Um, and once that training is done, we'll have that day so that we can have a time frame for people to come and have their seat checked. We'll also do it on an individual basis if somebody uh, has a child and or somebody moves to town and they want to have their car seat checked, they can still do that by just calling the PD and, and have, have, setting up a time to meet with me to have that done. Could you please explain seatbelt safety for those new underage drivers? Sure, well the law in New Hampshire is kind of unique. We are the only state in the country uh, that doesn't have a seatbelt law for adults, meaning anybody above the age of 18, 18 and above, doesn't have to wear a seatbelt by law. Anybody under the age of 18, 17 and under, has to have a, a seatbelt on. Uh, and that's a tickable offense if not. 
and anybody under the age of um, seven needs to be in a child restraint, some type of child restraint system, be it a booster seat or whatnot, unless they are 57, let me check my number here, 57 or so, 57 inches tall, and then they don't have to be. Um, and when it comes to car seats, in terms of uh, infant seats, they, the um, American Association of Pediatrics has said that they want to see, they would like to see children in their car seats, uh, in rear-facing car seats, because that's the safest position for them to be in, until they're about two years old, and uh, unless they are exceeding the height and weight limit for that rear-facing seat, then they can go to a forward-facing seat. Um, so anybody that is driving a car is responsible for the people in their vehicle. And so if uh, a young driver is, is driving with uh, somebody underage that's not in a seatbelt, they can help be, be held responsible as well. Now before we go, is there, if anyone has any questions, where, they, where will they be able to find you? Uh, well, I'm the detective for the Lincoln Police Department. I can be reached uh, most days, Monday through Friday, at the Police Department, which is 745-2238. Uh, I'm also the school resource officer, so I can be found at the school uh, in this office uh, on a fairly regular basis. But if there are any questions about it or the seatbelt needs to be checked or a car seat needs to be checked, uh, the Lincoln Police Department is by far the fastest and easiest way to get a hold of me. All right, thank you. Sure. That's supposed to be five to seven miles an hour. And do a fixed object. Don't swear. So could you please describe that machine to us? That machine is called the Convincer. It's supposed to simulate a five to seven mile an hour crash into a fixed object. It's supposed to convince you to wear your seatbelt. Is there anything you want, might want to add? Well, I hope everybody wears their seatbelts and doesn't talk on their phone and um, uses caution when they drive. Because driving comes down to two things that keep you out of trouble, caution and um, caution and concentration. And if anyone has any questions about seatbelt safety, where would be the best way to contact you? Well, I'm with the Merrimack, New Hampshire Police Department, but they, you can feel free to call your local police department here in Lincoln. All right, thank you.